call me Hawk. Good evening, good morning, my subscribers, fellow South Africans, family and friends, world at large and all humanity. Before I begin today's video, please may I ask you to subscribe to my channel. Hit the thumbs up for like and the more likes, the more views. Ring the bell. The icon is there to notify you of upcoming videos. If the content of this video touches your soul, please share and share again. Hawk gives you nothing but the truth and the world needs the truth. Donations are greatly appreciated as I have been trying to help many South Africans out with my own funds. But donations are needed now for many in South Africa of all races. Here within the donation link in blue. Donation link can be found below. Take care and thank you. Furthermore, please note I operate under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Any video clip, if any, have been used and found in public domain. The copyright link to the clip will be found in the description below. Please click the link to enjoy the full video if mentioned in this video. All views expressed are purely my own based on extensive research. I urge everybody to do their own research on the topic being discussed in this video. Please check you're not unsubscribed. And once again a big shout out to Eli Howard. Thank you very much for joining the show. And uh, look forward to seeing you at Highway 30 Music Fest. And speaking of Highway 30 Music Fest, my, my next two guests who are waiting uh, should be joining me at that time. And uh, they're also joining me right now for Outlaw Radio Conservative Talk. Outlaw Radio Conservative Talk. I want to tell you that America is the greatest place on earth. We will make America great again. We're the people telling the government what to do. It doesn't tell us. We're the people of the driver. The government is the car. And we decide where it should go. And by what route and how fast. Outlaw Radio Conservative Talk starts now. All right. At this time, I'm welcoming back uh, my two good friends. I've got the Hawk Montgomery here with us. How you doing, Hawk? How you doing, buddy? Hey, doing well, doing well. And I'm also joined by Josh Winwell. How you doing, Josh? Hey, Bill. Hey. So I wanted to bring you guys in now, uh, partially because uh, you guys are last-minute replacements for the guest I was supposed to have at this time who couldn't make it, his schedule was just a little too heavy, but um, so I really didn't want to talk politics on this show, but there's been so much happening this week, and I mean there, is a, there has been a lot, uh, and a lot of just utter stupidity, which is why I'm bringing you guys in also as we reveal the Outlaw Radio, Idiot of the Week. And if you're watching on the iVlog channel, you will see the Outlaw Radio Idiot of the Week. And uh, she did just an idiot all the way around. Who else, none better than Nancy Pelosi? <sighs> Where do you begin with her? <laughs> I mean, God. Uh, Josh, you have had some rather colorful things to say about Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, other than she's a witch. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, God, she's, uh, it's just all, all bad with her. Not, not just the impeachment stuff, all the stuff about her personal life being, uh, you know, she became rich in Congress as a public servant. You know, just all the corruption in California. It's just, 
Yeah, like you said, where where do you begin? <laughs> and uh, Hack, you too have had some rather nice things to say about her because right after the uh, the impeachment hearing, you uh, you put out a couple of videos. Yeah, I did. I was traveling through the Midwest talking to people. Everybody I was talking to were just like shocked because what's the point of having an impeachment articles drawn up and passed by your little gang there and not to do anything with it with the Senate. they just hanging on to them. And when asked by the media, she starts getting angry. I don't want to talk about that right now. Oh, yeah, well, suddenly you got a problem with it because you can't do nothing with it. See, the, the thing is, Trump is a gambler, and he's good at it. I kind of think he set them up. Yeah. You know, Trump Trump is sitting there, and he hasn't, he's sitting there, he's, he hasn't even revealed his cards at this time, and uh, he's not going all in, he's not pushing in all of his chips. But obviously, Nancy Pelosi has gone all in and is trying to bluff. And Trump can see right through it. And when it comes time for Trump to reveal his cards, it's going to be, (laughs) well, for, for the conservative side, it's going to be spectacular. For the liberal side, it's going to be a nightmare. Well, you know what's funny? You know what's kind of funny is that when you tell a lie many times, people start to believe the lie. So uh, many of the people that I did interview, they were dressed well. They had the, uh, you know, decent clothes on. They were cowboys and hardworking blue-collar people, truck drivers, you name it. And I stopped at one store. And the lady had blue hair, earrings in her ears, in her nose. She looked a little weird. And when I mentioned Trump, she was like, do you really want my answer? People were listening to that recording. Really? Well, did you know that nothing was said? No, no, that's not what the Democrats said. Oh, really? Have you been listening to to the Looney Tunes? Because I, all I heard was hearsay. And you know, zero plus zero equals zero. See... The, the mainstream media, CNN, MSNBC, and all of them, have just twisted this around, you know, like, I say, and the, the state of California, I mean, Josh, you're from California, we talked about this the last time on your show, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a left-wing haven that's uh, is becoming a you know, basically North America's Venezuela. Yeah. But, uh, and that, and you felt compelled to leave. Right. Say, say that little part again, Billy. As yeah. I said, in the end, you just felt compelled to leave. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it's just, uh, I mean, they're, they're really... There really is nothing, no benefit <clears throat> to being in that state. The weather's nice, but, um, you know, I mean, if you uh, believe in low taxes, if you believe in, uh, you know, uh, being able to walk down the street and not be hassled by by homeless people all over the place, I mean, uh, you know, if, if you, uh, you know, I, I drive an older uh, pickup truck and you know it's uh, you know I don't even want to get started with how much money I had to pay the California TMV just to keep that thing on the road because they labeled it a, a polluter you know all that smog crap and it's just yeah I mean there's a I could list off a million and a half reasons why I felt compelled to leave the state there's just there's just not almost nothing good about the state anymore <clears throat> You know, I I was living in California, and I stated this before during the 1988 elections when uh, you know Reagan's ready to leave office, and um, you know it was, it was a race between uh, George H. W. Bush and Michael Dukakis, 
And that, you know, back then, Michael Dukakis was pro abortion, completely anti death penalty, and said, that uh, if his wife was uh, if his wife was raped, he would he wouldn't seek the death penalty or anything like that. And the funny thing is, back then, and while I was living in California, people were laughing at him there. People thought he was a joke, because, mainly because when he was asked if his wife was raped and murdered, would he seek the death penalty? And he said no. And that, that made him a, the biggest joke in the, in the Californians' eyes. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember you telling me about that. <laughs> yeah, people left and right were laughing at him. And he lost that election in, in, in a huge landslide. Huge landslide. But since those days are long gone in California, you know, people have forgotten about Ronald Reagan. And, you know, yeah, yeah. California used to be more of a red state than Texas. Yeah, yeah, back in Reagan's day, and yeah, oh yeah. You know the <laughs> it's, thing is, it's crazy to think what what has happened in just a short, really a short period of time. It's crazy to think how how things have changed and people's crazy attitudes and everything else. <laughs> what were you saying, Buck? <laughs> you know, if you if they because one person got away with it, the others decided, well, they got away with it, we'll do it again, and they got away with it again and again. And Again. And in the end, they passed these stupid laws and they can't get rid of them because you got people like Feinstein who's been in there for about 90 years, so is that Waters idiot, and there's a few others, and you can't, and they keep moving the districts around so you can't get them voted out. And Maxine, Maxine Waters was. <laughs> God, where do you begin with with her too? I mean, remember when she? There's a speech of her. You can find it on YouTube where she's encouraging the public, you know, basically doing the same sort of crap that Malema's doing over in South Africa. It's because she's we're... encouraging people to incite violence against conservatives. And you see, and the thing is, that. The, the, the thing is, nobody stepped forward and charged her ass, so she got away with it, so here comes the next one, and the next one, and then you go to Antifa, and they don't arrest them for terror. They need to classify all those idiots as terrorists. Uh, burning the flag, there's a there's a law, you can't do that, but they'll do it, nobody does nothing. And, and you know, if the law does not prevail, you have no damn law. Yeah, it, the, just look for the video on YouTube. There's Maxine Waters telling she in her speech. If you see a Trump supporter, you need to harass them. Her exact words. That is a RICO <laughs> law. That's a violation of the RICO law. Because if somebody gets hurt, or murdered, or beaten, or insulted, that's that's actually part of the RICO law. Because you inciting people to murder, rape, beat do whatever, and that day you go to jail. So if anybody gets hurt, that is a Republican incited by this idiot woman. There's another 90-year-old woman that's completely, most of them are senile. Listen to Pelosi. She's da 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 And then when they try to, when they try to tell her something, she spun around and she goes, no, you wait, you wait. I, 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 I'm praying for Trump. And in two words, she starts praying for Trump and wants to impeach him in the next minute. But when they said to her, okay, now when are you going to drop the, the articles of impeachment in the Senate so they can go do the trial and show you show you sorry bastards that you had, didn't have nothing but a hearsay or from some doofus that they don't even know who he is and some lieutenant colonel who's like got a beef with, with the Republican Party, his career is shot. That, listen, as far as I'm concerned, anybody that reported this phone call is a traitor. And therefore, should be brought up on, on treasonous charges for exposing the, the government's business, internal business, into the public, into the media. And you know what? The first person they charge for treason, you watch the rest of them run. And until they do that, this will continue down this road all the time. Somebody with some balls, they need to just take them by the horns and charge their sorry asses. 
Now this little twit, Schaefer or Shift or whatever his name is, they should wring his <laughs> neck. They should, once this impeachment <laughs> bullshit's over, they should get him, take his little, wring his neck and put him in jail for about 30 years. And you know what? And I'll bet you any money that boy will sing like a canary because he'll give them all up. And guess what? He won't make it through the week. Somebody will choke his ass in jail, just like that idiot pedophile. What's his name? Uh, Jeffrey um, Epstein. Epstein. I'm telling you, buddy. Somebody will choke his ass in jail or give him a carrot in the wrong area, and he'll be coming out of there, and then he'll say, oh, they raped me. I'm going to hang myself. And you know what? Guaranteed. You'll find him hanging by his shoestring in the in the in the room and there was no video at that time and no guards around. Oh, we went for tea just while they choked his ass, you know what I mean? Come on man, I wasn't born yesterday. <laughs>
We'll close doors and go to Botswana. You better get rid of these people. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what Honda did. They moved out. They told the government, we're leaving. If you don't stop this shit, we're leaving. That's exactly what they did. They went to Botswana. And the cost of, cost of building them was a third. <laughs> Now, Josh, I, I want to ask you this, you know, considering this is, this is what they're doing in South Africa with, uh, with, with, the, uh, with the resources, with the electricity and whatnot, and the, the ones who suffer the most are, are the taxpayers who actually work, work, earn a decent day's pay, work their asses off. You know, the taxpayers get screwed, but those who, the, those who, uh, I always looking for a handout. Those lazy ones who haven't paid their electrical bill. Well, they they've got an electrical bill high enough to, to file bankruptcy on, but they don't get they don't they don't get their uh, power shut off. And, and you witness similar things too in California, where the working man is always screwed mm -hmm. by the socialist agenda. And, and yet the freeloaders are getting everything they want via the California state government. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, that, that sounds, that sounds very similar. <clears throat> you know, I've lived here in Idaho for over a year. Um, but I've, uh, I mean, I've, I've talked to my dad. Uh, usually I try to call him every week. And, you know, he would, um, he, he'd call me and he'd say, hey, uh, I just wanted to call you today because they're going to shut the power off this weekend. Um, they're having a, a wind advisory. You know, my dad has always worked, always worked hard. Down in Sacramento, the, the closest big city area to where my dad is, you know, they, those people don't have their power shut off. The homeless shelters, uh, you know. But up up in the mountains where my dad that yeah I, I mean uh, and not just my dad other people I used to work for friends I still have in the area I mean I talk to them and and they go yeah I can't believe it they're gonna shut the power off again this this uh, weekend or the next couple days and um, I mean they're they're um, there will be a fire advisory or wind advisory in one part of the state, and they're shutting power off all over, even even in counties, even in counties that um, there's no fire danger, there's no wind danger, but those people are still getting their power shut off. It's, I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. You can look more into it and try to try to. Uh, you know, I mean, there's conspiracies that have gone off of it, all all kinds of stuff. But uh, at a minimum, it just, I don't know. I mean, like you said, the Venezuela of North America, maybe that's, maybe that's part of a greater plan where they're trying to get people used to not having electricity all the time, just like in South America or parts of poor Asia or, you know, I mean, who, who knows, right? Well, I'm, I'm all for the idea, too, of uh, the, taking uh, the uh, part of California to a separate state of its own, calling it New California or whatever it may be, you know, especially because, like I said before, you know, we just, if California secedes from the Union, we're in some trouble because that's, that's a lot of uh, America's agriculture right there in California. About I don't know what percent of it it is, but it's a lot. But if they take that part where they have the agriculture and all that and just, you know, secede into their own state, I got no problem with that. And Los Angeles, all the way down San Diego, even up to San Francisco, if they want to secede, they've already, already become a shithole where the bums can can urinate and defecate on the sidewalks and, and use needles and all of that, you know, they've, they've turned it in, into, into this abyss that I'd never want to go to again. I used to enjoy going to San Francisco and going to the roof. But, you know, it's, yeah. ba it's bad enough when you walk around in the city park, you got to worry about stepping in dog shit. 
Well, now you're not in San Francisco. You got to worry about ste- stepping in somebody's some human shit. You shouldn't have to worry about that. <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, you know the best. Exactly. The best. The best part is if they do secede. There goes Nancy Pelosi. There goes Waters. There goes the rest of them. And uh, Jerry Brown and his farting cows. He's gone too. Yeah. Well, once this whole impeachment thing, you know, comes to a light, because what what these idiots don't realize is that Trump knows what he's doing. Trump's playing the game. You know, he wanted to be impeached. He. He's he's setting a trap for them that they have no idea what what's going to hit them. They, you know, and a lot of people are so stupid they think, oh, impeachment means removal from our office. No, it doesn't. It means subpoena to court. I mean, and okay. court innocent until proven guilty. And and once he's Trump's reelected, make his move. Once he's reelected, God help him, because he's going to go for them. Listen. He's, he's probably going to go for them in a big way. The Pfizer things just backfired on them because they found it was absolutely uh, mismanaged on the Pfizer reports. They're going to go after everybody they pulled the stunt on that one. They're gonna Once those guys come down the pike, you'll see what will happen. They'll start pointing fingers. They're going to point fingers directly at Obama, Hillary Clinton. Pelosi's going to be stuck in that mess. So is Shift. So is uh, what's Pelosi's uh, little yes man? Uh, what's his name, man? Um, he's he's always with Pelosi, but he's been quiet lately. Um, gosh, it's just slipped my tongue. But anyway, they all they all gonna go down the down the rabbit hole with this mess, and they all know it. And they the reason they're holding on to these articles of impeachment. It's because they think it can hold this carrot over his head. He don't give a shit. He knows they got nothing. Now they can't go nowhere with it. They've literally ran themselves into a corner. On the day that they impeach him, they sign the agreement for Mexico and Canada trade deal to get us better trade, right? And the same day the Chinese come forward, okay, the deal's in place. We're going to sign it now too. That's three big ones. Europe's the, Europe's over there crying. Okay, good. And guess what happened? Boris Johnson gets reelected in a landslide. There goes Brexit, and we got all the trade from England too. Here, here, here's the thing: it's the scary thing that the left wants. Trump doesn't fit their narrative, so that's why they're doing this. You know. Well, you look at it. To- how do you get yeah. it? How do you get into 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 U.S. government, Senate, or even you know as a, just a senator, even in the House or the Senate, and you earning maximum two hundred thousand dollars a year? You explain how this bimbo Pelosi, who was a, a oil like quick loop, she was a quick loop model, standing in a bikini. Go look. She was standing in her bikini selling oil in a can at Quick Lube back in the day in the 50s, right? She's now the house speaker who's dithering, dumb, stupid, right? How does she become a billionaire, a millionaire? How? Making 200000 a year. You explain something to me. Now suddenly they want to pass all these cheap drug laws and all this crap. Well, I have a question for all of them assholes. Okay, who are you a consultant to? If your name is on any of these drug companies as a consultant, you cannot vote because it's a conflict of interest. You will find that 90%, including the Republicans, are on consultancy uh, things with these drug companies. They are also consultants with all these HBO medical companies. So guess what? That's why our medical system sucks. Because all these guys are corrupt. Every single one of them. So what needs to be done is say, okay, listen, we're going to take a vote on lower drug things, but the only people that can vote are the people that are not consultants to drug companies and not consultants to medical co- medical insurance companies, right? 
And if you've got any donations from any of these people, you cannot vote because it's a conflict of interest. Now, you'll find there may be, maybe a hundred guys out of the 545 or 54 criminals that are in there, they can make a vote. They're not going to like the result of that one. <laughs> no. So the thing is, though, this is, this is what the left wants. For those of you listening out there, this is what the left wants. Trump's not fitting the narrative. They feel that there's overpopulation. I mean, yeah, the population is huge compared to what it was uh, 30 years ago. There's a lot more people, sure. I get that. But they, they, they've they obviously proven how they want um, population control. I mean, Trump's trying to make, to make it something beneficial for everyone, to where everyone has a job. And... You know, we have a prosperous economy, which he has succeeded and they don't like it. The left wants you to, uh, you know, you have to fit the narrative. Otherwise, they want you dead. I mean, Obama brought over those people that, from Africa that had Ebola. Well, I mean, what's up with that? Why is he bringing them here? Why did he fire 30 of our top generals? Yeah. Why did he retire? He retired almost every lieutenant colonel in the U.S. military that had over 30 years' experience. So it's to weaken the country. Exactly. Weaken our economy. Of course, during a recession, the suicide rate went up, if you remember, 10 years ago. How the, how the suicide rate kept going and going because people were falling into deep depressions. You know, this is what the left wants. And think about that. And yet they're going to ter throw terms, racist, sexist, homophobic, whatever. They're trying to take their narrative and shove it down your throat. And that is called communism. Tell the lies enough times and you'll believe it. Yep. Anyway, Josh, I'm sorry I didn't give you a lot of chance to speak, but uh, no, I just I just had to bring you bring you in on all this too. But uh, we're out of time for this segment, and I want to wish both of you guys a Merry Christmas. And uh, yes, indeed. And uh, we're going to hit our music set really quick. Uh, Hawk, once again, why don't you plug your YouTube channel? Yeah, just call me Hawk on YouTube. Uh, just You'll just get the truth from me. Blunt, raw truth. I don't pull punches. I just say it like it is. And it's the only way. And most of the time I'm supporting South Africa. That's where I was born. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on down there. It needs to be addressed. And uh, there's a slow genocide of white people. Over 75,000 people now have been murdered. One farmer a week. And they're not just murdering these farmers, they're torturing them for hours and hours. Raping the wives, cutting the eyelids of the husbands off so he can watch. Raping two-year-old children. And it's uh, it's really terrible. Boiling old people, taking towels and wrapping around their heads and boiling them with hot water. That their heads peel open. For what the reason is, we know what it is. It's pure racism. And it's another Rhodesia yet again. Yes, it's, and it's unfortunate. And it's keep in mind, that's what's going on in South Africa is the blueprint for what they want in America. Exactly. And so here's, a, here's the thing. They, taken. Yeah, and they're taking their land without paying them. So that's a human yeah. rights violation as per the ICC and, and the Geneva Convention. And what I can't, what I do not understand is the world, the world human rights organizations, these so-called famous organizations, are deathly quiet. They're allowing it to yes, happen. Indeed. They're allowing it to happen yet again. So they're just all a bunch of fake organizations. They just they scams all of them. Yes. Well, uh, once again, thank you guys very much. I definitely got to hit the. Uh, Music set, but uh, yeah, I, I hope your Christmas is blessed for sure. You too, buddy. All right, take care, guys. Take care. <laughs>